Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 1st of November. India's PM Modi, Bangladesh counterpart jointly inaugurate development projects. Over 1 lakh Afghans gone home as deadline to leave Pakistan expires. And Bangladesh main opposition to boycott vote if PM Hasina stays put. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladesh counterpart Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday jointly inaugurated three Indian-assisted development projects, including a cross-border rail link between both the countries. <laughs> Highlighting that the Indian government's approach of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas was relevant to neighbours like Bangladesh, PM Modi said New Delhi was proud to be Dhaka's development partner. He said India will provide full support in the Smart Bangladesh initiative and added that by the joint efforts of both countries, Bangladesh founder Sheikh Mujib's vision of Sonar Bangladesh will be fulfilled. Just a day after a terrorist killed a migrant worker in India's Jammu and Kashmir, a policeman was shot dead on Tuesday inside his home in Baramula district. The attack is the third targeted attack in Kashmir Valley in the last three days. The wreathling ceremony of slain head constable Gulam Mohammad Dar, who succumbed to his injuries, was held in Baramula on Tuesday evening. Following the incident, security officials have cordoned off the area and started a search operation to nab the terrorist. आप बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं ये पिछले तीन दिनों में तीसरी टारगेटेड किलिंग है ये साफ तौर पे पाकिस्तान की बर्बरता को दर्शाता है पाकिस्तान की जबरदस्त कोशिश है कि ऑनसेट ऑफ विंटर से पहले वो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा घुसपैठियों को तो कश्मीर वैली में दाखिल करे उसकी तमाम कोशिशें जो हैं वो विफल हो रही हैं More than 1 lakh Afghan nationals have already returned to Taliban rule Afghanistan in the past two weeks as deadline for undocumented immigrants to leave Pakistan is set to expire. A report. As Pakistan's deadline for undocumented Afghan immigrants to leave Pakistan is set to expire on Thursday, officials have reported that more than 100,000 Afghan nationals had returned to the Taliban ruled Afghanistan in the past two weeks. There were hundreds of trucks piled high with Afghan families and their luggage lined up on the Pakistan side of the border, waiting for it to open, and many saying they were evicted but had nowhere to go. Pakistan is home to more than 4 million Afghan migrants and refugees, about 1.7 million of them undocumented, including many who were born in Pakistan and lived there their entire lives. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pakistan's interior minister said authorities will start rounding up and expelling undocumented immigrants from Thursday onwards. Islamabad announced the plan earlier in October, saying Afghan nationals had been behind attacks, smuggling and other crimes in its territory. Kabul has denied this, saying Pakistani security is a domestic issue. First November, a deadline for illegal aliens. Ke liye. Uh, that is tomorrow. Kal tak unke volunteer return ka date hai. Aur from second onward, uh, our desire is a very lengthy, gradual operation. Jo hai, wo start hone Moving on, the poor education infrastructure in POK has continued to afflict students as they are forced to attend classes under an open sky. A report. Young children from Gehel Jabra village in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are forced to attend classes under an open sky while the administration is hardly concerned about the basic needs of a permanent classroom, toilets and safe drinking water. This is the situation of hundreds of schools in the region which were damaged in the 2005 earthquake. It has been 18 years but the Pakistani authorities have failed to rebuild the infrastructure fueling a sense of deprivation among the locals. I have seen school, 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 I have seen school
बरसात होती है तो हमें इस खुले मैदान में बैठ कर पढ़ते हैं कि स्कूल की कंडीशन इतनी बुरी हालत है मेरी गवर्नमेंट से अपील है कि हमें स्कूल दें ताकि हमारी पढ़ाई का बहुत आपके हर्ज हो रहा है ताकि हम बेहतर तरीम हासिल कर सकें locals in pok have been waiting for years now for a better administration that can work for their development but the ground reality suggests the government is hardly bothered about their concerns and aspirations UN chief Antonio Guterres addressed a joint session of Nepal's federal parliament on Tuesday as part of his four day visit to the Himalayan nation Guterres spoke about global conflicts, Nepal's transitional justice process and the impact of climate change. He welcomed efforts to drive progress and find solutions in regard to transitional justice and said that the UN, respecting the political leadership, stood ready to support Nepal. Transitional justice has long been pending in Nepal after the Maoists came to mainstream politics, ending decade-long insurgency which had claimed thousands of lives with whereabouts of scores still unknown. It is the first time since the adoption of federalism that a foreign delegate has addressed the federal parliament. Transitional justice can play a vital role in securing lasting peace, but we all know it's not easy by nature is a delicate and complex process. We know that transitional justice has the greatest chance of success when it is inclusive, comprehensive, and has victims at its heart. Bangladesh's main opposition party will boycott the next general election if Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina does not make way for a neutral government to conduct the poll. A BNP spokesperson said amid a crackdown on opposition politicians and deadly protests. BNP spokesperson Zahiruddin Swapan said boycotting the January election will delegitimize any win for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and possibly invite international sanctions. However, PM Hasina, who is seeking her fourth straight five-year term in office, has repeatedly ruled out handing power to caretaker government. Elections will happen like it happens in countries such as Canada and India, like it happened in 2018 in Bangladesh, she told a press conference on Tuesday. Wildlife enthusiasts rejoiced as authorities of the Kaziranga National Park in India's Assam resumed their famed elephant safari ride on Wednesday. The forest officials along with elephant trainers performed a small ceremony for an auspicious beginning of the safari. The first batch of tourists, including foreigners, was seen enjoying the one-hour ride through the forest which is home to the endangered one-owned Indian rhinosaurs. Spread over 430 square kilometers, Kaziranga National Park is a remarkable success story of the conservation of the one-horned rhino and other wildlife species. The UNESCO World Heritage Site is also home to a significant population of tigers, bisons, swamp deer and leopards among others. Fantastic, very good. My first time here and uh, it was just as, as we expected. Very peaceful, very nice. Yes. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.